Hey, what's up you guys? It's Tyler from The Inheritance and we're back today with a brand new video. Now this video today is gonna to be an update video to a video that I did probably over a year ago. And this is gonna be exactly how I match my Sony footage from my Sony A6300 with my Canon footage from my Canon C100. Now people talk all the time about how Canon has great color science and Sony's look so different and they're so hard to match and all this stuff, but I have figured out how to match them pretty well in a pretty easy way just using Lumetri Color. Now, like I said, I did make this video about a year ago and uh, just things have changed a little bit since then. My process has changed, my color grading style has changed, and I think overall I've gotten a better understanding of how both of these cameras work and how to work with the footage to make them look even better. So first, I'm gonna give you guys a few quick tips on how to make sure that your Canon and your Sony are gonna match as well as possible. And then we're gonna jump into Premiere and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do within Premiere to make them look great for the final film. So the first thing we need to go over is gonna be picture profiles. Now obviously, Canon and Sony have very different approaches to the way they handle picture profiles. So what I think is the best way to do this is to pick your primary camera, the one camera you wanna match everything to, set that one, and then have everything else sort of try and match that as best as possible. So for me, I match all of my cameras and all the picture profiles to the Canon profile because that's the one I prefer the most and that's the camera I shoot with most often on a wedding day. So for me, on the C100, I'm shooting with the wide DR picture profile. So for the Sony, um, I've been using, it's called I call it Matt Flat. Shout out to Matt Johnson. If you guys don't know Matt Johnson, he has an amazing, amazing YouTube channel. You should go check him out. I'm gonna tag him up here so you can go check him out. Um, but I use his profile that he suggests for Sony cameras, which he calls Matt Flat. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into, it doesn't matter what Sony camera you have, go into the S-Log3 profile, leave everything the same, but we're gonna switch the gamma over to Cine4. Essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you the science and the, uh, the look and a lot of the uh, Sony color science that goes into the S-Log3 profile, but by changing that gamma to Cine4, we're um, enabling ourselves to lower the ISO down to 200, as opposed to in a straight S-Log format, you're, you're capped, uh, your ISO is often capped at 1600, sometimes even higher depending on your camera. And this is gonna give you a nice flat image that retains a lot of that dynamic range similar to the YDR does for the Canon, but it's not gonna be nearly as flat as for S-Log. It's gonna be a lot more forgiving in you know, clipping highlights and shadows and things like that. And it's gonna make it a lot easier to work with in post. So this is what I like to use for my Sony A6300. So my next tip in order to get your Sony footage to match your Canon footage is going to be ignore your screens, okay? Your screens on your vector cameras are going to lie to you. Just like with picture profiles, I like to pick one screen on the cameras throughout the day and kind of use that as my my true north star, so to speak, as far as choosing white balance goes. And then every other camera is gonna match to that. So again, in this case, I think that the Canon C100 has the best screen of all the cameras that I own. So I use that to set my white balance and then all the other cameras that we own uh, are matched to that number. So what I'll do is I'll look through my Canon, the C100 Mark II, I'll set the white balance. So in this case, I think we're around you know 6,300 white balance. And then I'll set my A6300 to match that exact white balance number. Now, a lot of times it's gonna look weird on the back of the screen. The Sony screen is not very good and in 4K, they dim the screen very, very significantly in order to preserve uh, heat and so you don't overheat and things like that. So it's not going to look great on the screen. You just have to trust that it's gonna look good in the camera, right? So after doing this for enough weddings and using this camera enough, I've found that I just need to trust the uh, trust the white balance it's gonna that it's gonna match, just dial that number exactly, and then also using zebras is a huge, huge key to making sure that I'm not clipping any highlights, right? So a lot of times I'll look at the screen on my A6300 and it looks super dark, right? It looks really, really dark, it looks super underexposed, and it sometimes makes me nervous that 
it's going to be a really underexposed image. But by using the zebras, that's going to show me when I am actually clipping data in like the dress or anything important. And if I'm not clipping any data, I'm just going to trust that it looks good. Okay. So just, you have to learn your camera, learn your screen and trust that the white balance numbers that you're putting in are going to be consistent across, even if it doesn't look like that on the screen. And then the third and final tip that I found that helps to match all these cameras is going to be using a universal LUT across everything. So I use a specific LUT that I'm going to show you guys when we get into the computer that I put onto adjustment layer that goes across everything. And I found that by having this similar color look across all the different footage from the Canon to the Sony and applying it evenly universally across the entire film, it helps to make a lot of those subtle differences between the two different cameras a lot less noticeable. So I just think that having some sort of a look or some sort of a look across your entire film is going to help to just make everything look a lot more similar as you're switching back and forth between camera to camera to camera. All right, so those are my tips for when you're actually setting up your cameras and you're shooting in the field. Now let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you exactly what I do in post to make these match up. All right, so here we are. We're in Premiere Pro CC 2019. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do to all the different clips and to everything in order to get them to match up. So all we're going to be looking at is just this short little sequence right here. So we have these first two shots here are both uh, with the A6300, 1080p, 60 frames per second. And then these next two shots here are with the Canon C100 uh, at 60 frames per second. 1080p as well. So I'm just going to show you, uh, this is with the color correction on and with the LUT and everything applied. Um, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and play this for you right here. We are gathered together in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining together of Christina and Tommy in Christian marriage. And wherever true love is, God's own self is there. All right, so it's just a nice little opening sequence there you can see and like I said I'm using both the, the Sony a6300 and the C100 for these shots So what are we doing? What exactly is happening here? Okay, so I'm going to turn off the universal effects here and you can see what these shots look like straight out of camera So here is this the, the Sony shot straight out of camera Okay, and if we look over here at our Lumetri scopes, you can see that this is a well-exposed image, right? So this is a little bit tricky of a situation because there's shadows over here and then they're going to walk through this highlight spot. So where they are, they're maybe a smidge underexposed, but I kind of like the way that that looks. Again, we don't want to be blowing out any data here, and I wanted to make sure that when she walked through this, this uh, highlight area here, we weren't going to blow out her dress. So you can see that generally this uh, frame is pretty low on the exposure, but um, you know we're losing a little bit of highlight data here in the sky, but I'm totally fine with that. But all in all, this is a very well exposed image. And what you can also see here is that even in the darkest areas down here of the actual image, we're not getting anywhere close to zero. That has to do with the way that we have our picture profile set up in the camera. It's raising these blacks and it's helping us keep as much dynamic range in this as possible. Okay. So again, this is completely straight out of camera, but you can also see that it's not very vibrant. There's not a lot of saturation and it's kind of flat. It's not super flat like you'd get from a log profile, but it's definitely not what we want it to look like. Okay. So here's another shot, same sort of deal. You can see here without and then with, you know, it's not a huge change, um, but it, you know, it makes it look significantly different. And then here's the Canon straight out of, uh, here's straight out of camera, and here's with the LUT and everything applied. So you can see that the Canon, like I said, is a lot closer straight out of camera to what I'm looking for, which is why I love shooting with Canon cameras and why I match everything to that. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't get there. So and this is just with the LUT. There's absolutely nothing done to the individual clips. All I'm doing is adding the LUT and that's good to go. So, okay, so let's go back to the Sony clips. What exactly am I doing here? Okay, so if I take the adjustment layer off, all right, so you can see we go from, again, this is nothing, nothing. This is what we have. So it's a little bit pumped up, like a little bit uh, more saturated probably than we need, but then it gets brought back down with our adjustment layer. So what did I do over here? So let's look over here in the Lumetri color panel. You can see that um, universally, I do this per pretty much every single Sony clip, no matter what, right? There's a few times, depending on the situation, or if my exposure was way off, I have to make a few other adjustments. But for the most part, I'm doing this exact same process for every clip, regardless of the lighting situation, okay? So again, this is assuming that I have my white balance correct and that I have my exposure correct, okay? Those are two really important factors. But what I always do, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, with the Sony footage is I start by adding saturation. I usually do about 150% 
Um, I find that to be a good number. If it's a really like tungsten-y situation, you don't want that much. Sometimes I'll do like 130, but for the most part, I'm almost always doing 150% saturation. I'm boosting the contrast to around 20 and then kind of fluctuate from there. Um, I'm pulling out shadows to here to about 30. Um, and sometimes if I need to, I'll, I'll add a little bit of black back in, but for this situation, I did not. I'm always, always, always going to push my tint a little bit more towards the magenta. Sony tends to lean green where Canon definitely has more magenta tone. So I always, 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 I'm going to pump my magenta a little bit. And then the temperature up here will fluctuate from shot to shot. Most of the time I'm pulling it down and I'm actually adding a little bit more coolness, pulling some of the oranges out of it. But this is the one that'll fluctuate a little bit depending on your white balance situation. So um, again, you can see, you know, again, the before and the after. And now let me show you why I do this with the shadows. If I bring these back down to zero, you can see that this is really heavy, right? By adding in this contrast and by pumping up the saturation, which is pretty much all I've done here, it's just a very heavy image. There's a lot of more detail. Like it's just kind of dark, darker than the Canon is, right? This is all about matching to the Canon. So um, like I said, I always going to take these shadows and bump these up to around 30. You don't want it to, you don't want it to be too, too much. If you go too far, it starts to get flat and kind of blah, right? You can do that. I mean, you can see how much data is here, which is again, the nice thing about the Sony and the nice thing about that, uh, that matte flat picture profile is giving us a lot of shadow detail, but that's too much in my opinion. We want there to be some moodiness, some contrast to this image. So around 30 is where we're going to live, which is significantly better than this. It's just a little too heavy handed for my liking right around 30, 33 is pretty perfect. Um, and yeah, so this is looking good. And then all I do from here is I copy this and then, you know, I would paste the attributes to all to the next Sony clip and to pretty much any Sony clip after that. And then the only thing I adjust from uh, from clip to clip is going to be, again, this temperature slider, depending on how on or off my white balance was. But for the most part, I'm doing this exact same process for every single clip. Um, and then since I know everyone's going to ask, I'm just going to show you this anyway for my adjustment layer. Um, this is again, a very simple adjustment layer. All I'm doing is I'm using a LUT. It is a cine subtle teal and orange LUT. I will link, uh, in the description below exactly where you can go buy these. If you want, it's actually made by a fellow YouTuber. Um, so it's supporting him as well, which is pretty cool. So you can definitely go check these out. This is my favorite one. Um, again, it's a subtle amount of orange and and teal in the shadows, which I think looks really, really great for skin tones and for weddings. It's just a very, I don't know, I think it looks makes skin tones look really great. And again, this LUT I chose specifically to pair with my Canon cameras based on the Canon look. So if you shoot with a different camera, this LUT may not look as good. It may, it may not, you have to experiment for yourself, but there's a bunch of them that are in there. Okay, so I use that LUT. Um, I have the intensity around 50%. I'm adding 10, 10 sharpening um, and that's it. That's all I'm doing. That goes on the adjustment layer, which goes across the entire film. It gets locked down, uh, so there's no adjusting it. And that is universal across everything, no matter what, literally across the entire thing. That's kind of like what gives our films a very cohesive, um, I, I, cinematic for lack of better words, look. So again, straight out of camera with everything applied. I personally love the way this looks. I think it looks really great with the lenses and the camera that I have. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So there you guys go. That is exactly what I do to match my Sony footage with my Canon footage. It's really not rocket science. It's really not that complex, um, but you know, it is possible. And I, I, I want people to know that like you can have the best of both worlds. Like I love the a6300 because it's such a small little gimbal and it's so easy to use and it has a lot of really great features and it's affordable and it's light and like all those things are really great about it. Um, but I also love the C100 and I love the color science of that. So it's not impossible to have both. You, you can mix and match and you can get it right. And at the end of the day, you need to remember too that we as filmmakers have a much more critical eye than probably anybody else. So brides and people like that, they may not pick up on the subtle little differences or the subtle little hints and changes here or there. So as long as you can get close enough so that it's not jarring and obvious to just like a random person, that's your goal. You don't have to necessarily strive for perfection because you can drive yourself crazy sitting here trying to get every single little tone, every little ounce of everything to look exactly identical, right? Don't worry about that. As long as it's close enough, it's not super jarring and it's not super obvious that they're different, people are never gonna notice. So that's it, you guys. I Hopefully you guys found this really helpful. Hopefully this is uh, 
something that you guys can benefit from by watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, if you have anything I missed in this video, please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much. This has been Todd from the Harringtons, and I'll see you in the next one.